Hey guys, Mike Builds, welcome back to another video. It's another battery review for you guys. We have this 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from a company called Power Eurus. Eurus? Really not sure how to say that. Another weird name we've never seen before, but they do make a ton of different batteries. So we have this one right here to test. They say it'll do 4,000 charge and discharge cycles, grade A cells. Right now the cost of this battery, if you buy it directly from them, is 160 bucks. So it makes it not the cheapest, cheapest battery, but far from the most expensive. So we'll see if it's actually worth the money here or not. What's interesting about this battery, and I haven't seen this on any other ones, is it has like a vent right here built into the lid. So that's interesting, I haven't seen that before. Apparently this thing has Bluetooth 5.0 as well. It doesn't say anywhere on the battery that it's Bluetooth, but it does say on the website. So that's interesting. We're definitely gonna test that and see if it has Bluetooth or not. They say it has a five year warranty. This is a standard size battery, so not a mini size. It can do 100 amps continuous. It's only rated at 50 amps continuous charging, but you can probably do 100 and won't hurt it. Maximum continuous discharge is 100 amps and it can do 200 amps for five seconds. We're definitely gonna test that when we do our high amp load test on this battery. Brand new grade A cells. Okay, here's what's interesting. On the website, when I'm scrolling through the features of this battery, it says it has something called an auto balancing function, allowing you to connect it in either parallel or series. So somehow the BMS is able to self balance itself when you put it together with other batteries. I've never seen that before and I've never seen anyone advertise that before. I only have one of these to test, so I don't really have a way of verifying that. So take that for what it is but it is something interesting that they mentioned and I just, I haven't seen that before. And I wonder how they would actually do that. I'm gonna try to find the Bluetooth app and download it real quick. Oh, it's also got low temp charging protection as well. All right, apparently the app is called Roy Pow Fish. That's kind of funny. We're gonna try to find that in the app store real quick. It took me a second to find it. Normally they'll put a QR code on something on the labeling. So they need to do that if they're gonna advertise this as a Bluetooth battery. Also, it doesn't say anywhere on the battery itself that it's Bluetooth. I'm kind of wondering if that's a mistake or if it's just gonna be advertised on the website, but they really need to put it on here if it is. Normally all the other batteries that we've tested have a little Bluetooth icon or something letting you know that it's Bluetooth and then some of them even put a QR code where you can scan it in order to find the app. And here's the app. It's literally called Roy Pal Fish. Okay, there we go. I got the battery connected to the Bluetooth app and you get quite a bit of information on this. You get temperature sensor readings. Looks like there's four temperature sensors. So that's really awesome. You get the individual cell voltages down to the thousands. So you have three digits after the decimal point. So very accurate voltage reading there. You get your min and your max, your average capacity. And that's it. And this thing's very well balanced. It's 0 0.003 volt differences between the cells. A pretty simple app. It gives you a lot of good information that you want, not a whole lot of stuff you don't need. And you can definitely monitor everything really nicely from here. So I'm gonna go ahead and recharge the battery fully so we can do a capacity test. We're gonna do it at 0.2C, which is gonna be 20 amps. Then we're gonna recharge it again, then do a full current discharge test. We're gonna put 250 amps of load on this thing, see if the BMS will actually cut out like it's supposed to. Then we're gonna open this thing up, take it apart, take a look at the BMS, the cells, as much as we can see, and that's it. So let's get into it. I forgot to mention, you also get a little service manual in here, and I did read through this, and it didn't say anything about Bluetooth. It just tells you how to connect everything. All right, we have a red light, so we are charging. This is a 10 amp charger, so it should take about maybe five hours if it's at 50% capacity. All right, guys, we got our Power Eurus battery fully recharged. So we're at zero amp hours. Just ignore the 12.8. I think the BMS actually cut off because of the high voltage disconnect. But anyways, we're at 100%, zero amp hours. So this is gonna read our total amp hours once the test is complete. We're gonna put a 0.2 C load on the battery, so that's gonna be 20 amps. So we're gonna kick the inverter on. And there we go, we have 22 amps. That's about as close as I can get to 0.2 C. And once the battery discharge test is done, we're gonna see what our final number is. So it's gonna take about five hours to do the test. The capacity test just finished up and we got 101.7 amp hours. All right, now we're gonna test the high current disconnect feature on the power Eurus battery. So the battery is fully recharged. We have a Sun Gold Power 3000 watt low frequency inverter. That's gonna be able to provide our load with two space heaters. So we're gonna start with one space heater. All right, that's 67 amps. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it to high. 126 amps. Let's go ahead and turn the other one to low. 180 amps, climbing up still. 193 amps. I'm gonna turn the other heater on high. It may trip the inverter, but let's see. 250 amps, 260 amps. Doesn't look like it's gonna disconnect. The beeping is from the voltage dropping so much to the inverter. We're pulling over 3,000 watts, 3,300 watts out of this battery. It doesn't look like it's gonna shut off. Well, we had about 280 amps and the battery never shut off. It says max discharge current's 200 amps for five seconds, but we were pulling way over 200 amps for more than five seconds and it didn't look like it was gonna shut down. We're gonna go ahead and open the battery up and take a look at the build quality and what's inside. All right, so off the bat, as far as how hard this thing was to open, this is up there with one of the hardest batteries that I've ever had to open up on the channel. I really wasn't expecting a whole lot out of this brand, just to be completely honest, because I never heard of them. But the build quality of this thing actually seems extremely impressive, just kind of first glimpse at it. So I need to finish getting the cover off, but just getting the glue worked around the cover was really hard. That took me probably 30 minutes. You know, some batteries, you can just pop the lid right off, easy to open up. But this thing, man, this thing fought me. 
So that's a really good thing though. You don't really want to be able to easily open these up anyways. And then just kind of looking into it, I see some things I've never seen before. So I'm going to try to get this cover off so I can show you guys some more detail. Try to keep everything together. So here's kind of a good first look of what's going on on the battery. And this looks completely different from anything we've taken apart before. BMS is kind of tucked in right here. What's really weird is they have like this aluminum material right here on the side of the cells. And it almost looks like it's acting as a heat sink. And if you look, there's a metal strap and that's what's actually compressing the cells. So you have these metal end plates on here acting as end plates to help support the strapping as it compresses the cells. But I think it's also acting as a heat sink. We have this big module up here. Actually, it's just a piece of foam with a little board kind of glued in right here. So this is probably gonna be our Bluetooth module. The terminals are really nice. They have these nice little silicone boots. It's like we actually have a terminal temperature sensor. So that's really interesting. I think if we would have kept pulling a lot of current out of this, it would have shut down just based off the temperature of the actual terminal. And that's really cool because if you are overloading the battery, instead of melting your terminal, possibly causing a high resistance and a fire, it'll actually shut the battery down instead of melting everything. And same on the positive terminal, we also have a temperature sensor. So that's really cool. It's actually monitoring the temperature of your leads where they connect into the shell where you're ultimately gonna make your connections. It's gonna be really hard to show this, but at the bottom of the battery, there's actually epoxy. So they put this whole assembly into the box and they actually epoxy it in there. So there's not gonna be a way I can get this out without completely destroying this thing. But I'm gonna show you guys what I can show y'all. So right here is our BMS. And it looks quite beefy. There's a huge heat sink in there. The board itself looks really nice. It's got a main positive power wire that feeds power to it right there. I can see down here we have bolt style terminals. There's no soldering on this thing. All the wires as well are loomed with this harness tape. Every single wire inside this battery has harness tape on it and it actually has a little label as well. We have long, thin rectangular cells compressed by the metal straps with the metal end plates like I was mentioning before. We have massive bus bars coming off our terminals which are gonna be on this side where our main connections are gonna be made. But very nice, very beefy looking bus bars. There's a look at one of the actual cell bus bars. The laser welds look really nice. We have really thick bus bars. We have expansion joint for heat. Try to get one of these temperature sensors out without breaking it. I tried to get the temp sensors out, but they're kind of buried down there under a bunch of tape and epoxy, but that's a good thing. They're very well attached to the cells themselves, so they're actually gonna get a accurate temperature reading of the battery cells themselves. Unfortunately, there's really not much more I can show you guys on this battery without completely destroying it, and I don't wanna do that because I do wanna do more testing and keep using the battery. This thing's build quality is really good. I'm actually quite impressed from a brand that we've never heard of before on the channel. In my eyes, this thing's very, very well built, very robust, no high current protection. We do seem to see that more often than not. I'm assuming that if we would have kept pulling all the power, like I said before, we probably would have just overheated the BMS or the leads and it would have shut off with the over temperature. So I'm gonna assume that that would work as designed, but overcurrent did not seem to work. You could probably use this in a golf cart situation because of that. In my own experience, I've seen those to work quite well whenever they don't have the high current protection. But everything else about this battery is really well built. I'm really liking what I see. Never really seen this design before. And I love opening up different batteries where we see things that are different from all the cookie cutter builds that we've seen before on all the other batteries that we've reviewed in the past. But that's really it, guys. Let me know if there's anything specifically you want me to put in more detail, but it looks pretty good. Okay, guys, that's gonna wrap up testing of the Power Urus. 12 volt 100 amp hour battery this thing did pretty good high current discharge didn't work it did pull full capacity the build quality is honestly really amazing for the price of 160 bucks i haven't seen a battery that cheap with this sort of high quality build thus far I mean, I was really impressed with what I saw. You guys saw it. It was nothing I've ever seen for this price, in my opinion. These guys are still pretty new to the market, so we'll see if they keep that up. Hopefully, they're not just trying to sell a really nice battery really cheap to get their feet off the ground and then start selling bad batteries. Get the high current protection actually work, and this thing would be phenomenal. I also didn't test any of the low temp cutoff because the way the temp sensors are mounted, I would have to destroy the battery. This thing seemed pretty solid. I, I guess time will tell how good it holds up. I want to keep doing some testing on the side with this thing. Maybe put it in the golf cart, do some golf cart duty with it. And overall, just keep kind of messing with it. But anyways, guys, let me know what y'all think about this battery in the comments. If you guys are using the Power Years batteries or any of them, please let me know what kind of luck you guys are having with them, any issues or concerns that you guys have, let me know. I guess that's gonna do it, guys. Thank y'all so much for tuning in and watching this, and I'll see y'all in the next video.